All right, everybody, time for another video. So this one will involve a new concept, okay? Uh, now we've already been talking about limits for all the videos I've done so far, uh, but these will involve infinity or minus infinity. And in order to explain a little bit about infinity, which I guess I took could take it for granted that you know about infinity already, but let's say that you don't. I want to introduce it in a way that gives a context to the lesson. Okay, so infinity, like where, how are we going to see infinity show up? So I just made a video on one-sided limits, and this is an example of a one-sided limit. It says the limit is x approaches zero from the right. Okay, and I want to do this one specifically by a table because it will allow me to see uh, what I want to see about infinity for our lesson. So x goes to zero from the right. What would that look like? I need a sequence of numbers that get progressively closer to zero, but from the right hand side, progressively closer to zero on a microscopic scale with many decimal places to the numbers. All right. So that's what I want to do with the x and I want to see what happens over here. All right. So let's see, um, let me do like this. Okay, so let's start with 0 0.1, and then we'll go a little bit closer to 0, 0 0.01, and then we'll go a little bit closer than that, 0 0.001, okay? Uh, maybe one more, 0 0.0001, okay. So that's what x goes to 0 from the right would look like. Let's do our calculations over here and see, ultimately, is there some kind of pattern with these numbers? Okay, you know, so when I do these calculations, like I might wonder, are the numbers going to appear random, like with no order or pattern at all, or will there be a pattern? And, and that pattern is my answer, okay? So, all right, let's see. Um, if I take 4 divided by 0.1, I'll get 40, okay? If I take 4 divided by 0 0.01, I'll get 400, okay? And then 4 divided by 0 0.001, I'll get 4,000. And then if I take 4 and divide by 0 0.0001, I'll get 40,000. Okay, so I do see a pattern. In addition to the numbers all having 4s in them and, and so on, and each number having one additional zero in it, I, I see that the closer the x gets to zero from the right, the larger this number gets. 40, okay, then 400, that's bigger. It's much bigger. Then 4,000, much bigger. Then 40,000. So the smaller this one gets, the bigger that one gets. Now, uh, do you think as these numbers, if I were to continue this pattern, here. If I were to put another zero over here, what would happen over here? In other words, like, is there a ceiling to this? Like, is there, like, if I kept this up over here, would there be a point where this number couldn't get any bigger, like where it was impossible to get bigger? That's what I mean by ceiling. What do you think? Uh, well, that's not how numbers work. I mean, if I put another zero over here, and this number becomes even closer to zero, this number will get another zero too, and will be even bigger. And is there a ceiling? No, there's not a ceiling, because you know there wouldn't be an ultimate limit to how big numbers can be. What's the biggest number there is? No matter what you say the biggest number there is, is I'll add one to it, and I'll get a number that's even bigger. So there is no bigger number, and that's where the concept of infinity comes in. So I'll say that as x gets closer to zero from the right, four over x, the formula will get, it'll just get bigger. It will go to infinity. So my answer here is infinity, okay? All right, so that's how we might see infinity show up in some of our problems. Let's try another one real quick. Uh, so I did zero, uh, x goes to zero from the right, why, let's look at the other side. What happens as x goes to 0 from the left? Well, that might look like uh, negative 0 0.1. That's already fairly close to 0. Then we'll go a little bit closer. Negative 0 
negative 0 0.001. And I don't think it's our calculations aren't going to change much, but I wanted to do both sides. This is going to 0 from the left. Here I'll get negative 40. Here I'll get negative 400. Here I'll get negative 4,000. So over here I said, well, is there a ceiling to those numbers? Okay, there, there isn't. There's no ultimate limit to how big a number can get. Uh, so here I might say, well, is there a floor? You know, it's like these are getting like, for like 40s here, then negative 400, then negative 4,000. Is there a floor uh, beyond which the numbers can't go as they keep going down? Uh, well, no. I mean, just as numbers, there's no limit to how big they can get. There's no restriction on how small they could get. And I mean, small as in negative. All right. So this is going to negative infinity. All right. So negative infinity for this one. Okay. Now that's how we'll see infinity show up. Uh, in our problems. Now, let's let's do one that, at least when we look at it, seems quite a bit different than this. But how about this? Um, it's maybe so we can like keep everything straight. How how is there a way that we'll know when a problem uh, is going to have an infinity or a negative infinity as an answer? Like, see, this one had infinity. This one had negative infinity. Well. Any time that you get this type of problem, a non-zero number over zero, then the answer will be either infinity or negative infinity, okay? And here's what I mean, like, see this one says x goes to zero from the right? If I were to just plug in zero, I would get four over zero, okay? That's what I mean by a non-zero number over zero. If, if you were to just plug that number in, and get a non-zero number over zero, that means that the answer is going to be either infinity or negative infinity. And you you could flip a coin to find out because there's just two answers. Uh, you could, don't flip a coin. You could flip a coin, but don't do it. But you've narrowed it down to either infinity or negative infinity. So let's talk about how you could figure out which one it is now. There are three methods to doing these type of problems. Okay, now first of all, uh, let's see, what form does this one take? Let's see, let's do... What if I just, what if I just plugged in the negative 7? Then I would get, uh, well, let's do, let's do like this. Sorry. Negative 8 times negative 7 over 0. Am I right? Is that that's what it would look like when you plug in negative seven and so it's a non-zero number over zero so the answer is either infinity or negative infinity i know that much it's just a matter of figuring out which one it is okay so now there are three methods you can make a table you can draw a graph or inspect a graph if the graph is given to you or you can like mentally judge what would happen and I'll, it's, it's hard to explain this last method but I'll show you okay so first of all what what does x goes to negative 7 from the left look like so there's negative 7 right and then the left is over here so that that would be like numbers like negative 7.1 negative 7.01 negative 7.001 and so on so that's what it looks like if x goes to negative 7 from the left. All right, right here. So I've already done the calculations so that the video uh, would move a little faster, but that's what we're looking at. Now, what do you see? Negative 568, okay. And this one, negative 5608, and negative 56,008, and negative 560,008. So I'm seeing that as this number steps closer to negative 7 from the left, this number steps closer to negative infinity. All right, there we go. Negative infinity is our answer. So making the table is one way that you could do this, but so far as we've been doing limits, I've made lots of tables, and so it may not be that new of a concept to you. Um, now, the next one, the graph. Now, the graph and the table, I made a video uh, I don't remember, maybe it was Sunday, I can't 
remember where I said the table and the graph are really the same thing. They have the same information. How is that? Well, so here's the graph of this function y equals negative 8x over x plus 7. Here's the whole thing. That's what the graph is going to be. And it has some features in it like such that it has a vertical asymptote at negative 7. So that's a vertical line that the graph approaches but never touches or crosses. And then it has a horizontal asymptote uh, at y equals negative 8. And that's a horizontal line that the graph approaches um, on either end, left and right. So I've drawn it so it forms itself around the vertical and horizontal asymptote. Now, uh, you got to think, like, when I look at the graph, I'm sort of thinking like the table. What happens to the points on the graph as the x-coordinate gets closer to negative 7 from the left? Well, okay, this vertical line is where x is negative 7 is. And if you go closer, if you follow the points on the graph, as the x-coordinate gets closer and closer and closer to negative 7, what happens to the y-coordinate? Because on our table, this is x and this is y. So here, like, see those red dots? That's x going to negative 7 from the left. What does the y-coordinate do? What does y-coordinate measure on a graph? x measures left and right, y measures up and down. Well, it looks like as I have the x-coordinate move towards negative 7 from the left, the y-coordinate goes further and further and further down. Okay, down to where? Negative infinity. Why? Is there a floor? There's no floor. Okay, so we can see from that that the answer is negative infinity too. Okay, all right. Uh, I don't know what that is. Anyway, so I can see the table on the graph. And I can kind of see the graph on the table too. All right, so now you can do that either way. Now let's let's talk about this last method that is the fastest method, if, if you can get used to it. Um, let me go back up here, and I want to make the case that this is just the nature of arithmetic. Like when you first learn to divide numbers, you, you maybe you'll have this instinct about numbers. Isn't it true that when you divide numbers, the smaller number you divide by, the bigger answer you get? That's a, a basic fact of arithmetic. The smaller and closer to zero the number is you divide by, the larger your answer is going to be. So that's what that's what my table says. The smaller the number is I divide by, the bigger my answer is going to be. Okay. Now I can see that in my original problem. I can see that in this one too. Because when I plug in negative 7, I get 0 down there. And I can't divide by 0. But if, if I had a number that was close to negative 7, then this number would just be really small. And what do we say? What happens when you divide by really small numbers? You get really big answers. So here's the way I would think about it. My formula is negative 8x over x plus 7. So I'll say this. As, now this, this takes some thought, all right, and it's not for everybody, but I'll, I'll reason, here's my reasoning. If x goes to negative 7 from the left, what will this top number be? It will be a, I mean, it'll be about negative, it'll be about 56. Because I'm going to have negative 8 times a number that's real close to negative 7, right? So I'll get like 56 on top over, now what's that bottom number going to be like if x goes to negative 7 from the left? You know, what's, uh, what's negative 7.1 plus 7? It's negative 0.1. It's a really small negative number. Uh, what if x was negative 7.01? What's negative 7.01 plus 7? Negative 0.1. Okay. So I'm going to get down there as x approaches negative 7 from the left a very small negative number. Okay. 
very small negative number. Now, what is 56 divided by a very small negative number? It will be a very big negative number, okay? All right, now that suggests that the limit is negative infinity. Okay, now this one takes some reasoning ability. It takes understanding what I was saying about arithmetic, that if you divide by a small number, you get a, a big number, and if you divide a positive by a negative, you get a negative. And beyond that, you have to you know, mentally reason that if I take a number close to negative seven on the left and I add seven, I'm gonna get a very small negative number. But so long as you're comfortable with all those things, you can use this third method to generate the answer pretty quickly, okay? Now, I, I don't really think it matters how you do it. If you don't like the third method, you don't have to do it that way. If you're okay with the table, which I think most people by this point should be okay with the table, great. If you can sketch the graph or if you're given a graph, you can do it that way, great. Uh, I wanted to expose you to all the methods and ultimately have you decide how that you wanted to do it.